Well, good evening, good evening, good evening. And uh, just wanted to say welcome to uh, our class. And we're on, we're, we're doing the class Walking in the Spirit. And we're on week number eight. And I just want to say welcome to the class. And I'm excited for those that have taken the class. So many have come on after we've done Facebook Live. And so I want to have this just available to you. And this is our last class of Walking in the Spirit. So uh, we're finishing up a series of eight classes on Walking in the Spirit. And, and prior to that, we did nine classes on Experiencing God's Love. And so this is the follow-up class to Experiencing God's Love. And I wanted to say, if you missed any classes, you can go up to the first, F-I-R-S-T, first, spelled out, 1515am, first15am.org, and you can uh, find it on our website, the class is there, as well as you can go to the YouTube channel if you'd like, and it's Experiencing God's Love, and you'll see me at my picture there. And uh, all the classes are up there as well. So we did nine classes for experiencing God's love. We did eight classes for walking in the spirit. So we're finishing up this week, or we're finishing up class number eight today. And I'm excited what God is doing in your life. And tonight I want to pray for you. And uh, I want to have a little time at the end to pray three things for you. But uh, uh, I just pray pray that these classes have been an encouragement to your walk with the Lord. That's, that's my primary heart, is that I'm an encouragement to you and giving you some practical and useful tools to apply to your life. That's my other part, is that you have practical tools to apply to your life, that, that we're not only understanding what God wants to do, but we actually can walk that out. And that's the whole idea of walking in the Spirit. I want to pray again tonight for you at the end of the class, three areas that I believe God wants to do something significant in your life. He wants to do something powerful. He wants to unleash His power, His Holy Spirit power, in a new and a fresh way. I want to give you a few thoughts and uh, tonight before we do that. And, We've been discussing living in the now moment with God, living in the now moment with God, the right now moment, not, not yesterday's moment and not the future moment, but right now, just taking one day at a time and living in the now moment with God. We've discussed, uh, we want to be fully present with him in every moment. And we know the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. And that's what we want to experience every moment of every day. We want to live out of the flow of the Holy Spirit, out of that which comes from deep within us, where our spirit and his spirit are combined. And there's a flow that comes out of our heart and out of our life that's out of the kingdom of God and it's righteousness, peace, and joy. Each of us, though, are engaged in spiritual warfare. How many, you can lift your hand up out there, how many have been engaged recently in spiritual warfare it's every day it's every moment of the day we're under we're in a battle we're in the cosmic conflict as we've talked about and it's so intense and at times it gets so intense we hardly can can realize how we can get through but the power of God gets us through each and every moment maybe you're discouraged tonight maybe you're frustrated maybe you're struggling I believe tonight God is going to release something fresh and new in your life. And we've been learning how to walk in the Spirit. Romans 8 tells us about this conflict. Romans 8, 5, and 6. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. We realize there's that carnal nature. But those who are controlled, here it is, controlled by the Holy Spirit, think about the things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind, now think about it, not your brain where you think, but in your heart, where your mind is, where your thoughts are produced, that's where that will lead to death. But letting the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, control our life leads us to life and peace. That's no matter what the circumstances, this is not based on circumstances, no matter what the circumstances are, if the Holy Spirit is leading our life, if there's a flow, if there's a river being produced inside of us, then no matter what we go through, we can live it with life 
his life and peace. The Bible says righteousness, peace, and joy. Timothy, it says power, love, and a sound mind. We can live in the spirit. And that's the whole key to walking in the spirit. Last week, we talked about uh, practicing sword. We won't talk about that this week. But, but just think about how we can walk successfully in the Holy Spirit. We talked about in the morning, in the early morning, practicing the first 15 uh, in the morning, we, we experience a flow of the Holy Spirit as we surrender our will over to God's will. And we receive his love. And at that moment, inside of us, as we're surrendering our will over to God's will, and we're receiving his love, it activates inside of us the love center, and it diffuses the fear center inside of us. It says, perfect love casts out all fear or destroys all fear. So as we're spending time in the morning with the Lord, we talked about that over the weeks, that we're activating a flow of the Holy Spirit. It's amazing. I can go into that time uh, frustrated, discouraged. I, I have a X amount of time to be there, whether it's uh, 15 minutes or it's an hour or it's two hours, whatever it is. It's that time alone with God where we're allowing our heart to exchange with his heart and receive a flow of the Holy Spirit. That's what we're calling activating a flow of the Holy Spirit. Activating in the morning, allowing for that release. And it comes through surrender. I like to call it entering into surrender land, that place in him where we're saved as we yield our will over to God's will. And we talked about that in the first series, giving God complete control of our life. That's what surrender is. I was thinking this morning, what an amazing opportunity I have to surrender my will over to God's will, get him in control, and he will take control. He's very capable of handling up my life, your life. And so it's so exciting. Surrendering should be the most exciting thing we do in the morning as we're yielding over our will to his will and receiving his love into our being, into our heart. It's activating inside of us the love center and defeating fear. What an exchange. That is phenomenal. That is amazing. And maintaining a flow. We talked about that throughout this class. How do we maintain a flow? And we talked about practicing sword. And if you missed last week, you've got to get the tape from last week. You've got to go up and grab that, that class and listen to it and listen over and over to it. But it talks about practicing sword in the midst of difficulty. And in that, we were talking about not activating a flow, but maintaining a flow. How do we maintain the flow of the Holy Spirit? Well, in our carnal nature, it wants to react. And of course, God wants us to act. And that act, S, is to stop and be still. That's probably the hardest challenge. You can re-listen to last week and go over that and watch God transform your moments as you come into difficult situations. Today we want to talk about the four battle zones. Four battle zones. We're going to end on that. Four battle zones that each one of us face, our mind, our mind, our heart, which is our mind, will and emotions, our mouth, this, and our hand, what we do. So what we say, what we do. And then where does that originate? The battle is for our mind. That's where the battlefield is. It's for our mind. We talked about that. The mind set upon the flesh is death. But the mind in our heart, our mind, where our thoughts originate, if we allow the Holy Spirit to control our mind, it leads to life and peace. The mind is the portion of the heart that thinks. And, and eventually it gets out to our, our, our brain where it, it, that's a chemical thing. But before that, it's an inorganic thing that's occurring inside of us where God's given the, us the capacity to think. And he's given us the capacity to feel and the capacity to choose or decide. Mind, will, and emotions. The battle starts in the mind and the mind 
is the gateway to the heart. We must learn how to take every thought captive. We've talked about that. Taking every single, that's the great challenge, isn't it? To take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Wow. We think uh, uh, thousands, 40 to 60,000 thoughts a day. And there's 87, I think 84, I can't remember the number. There's a whole lot of seconds. So we're, we're processing a thought about every 1.5 to 2 seconds. We're, we're, we're thinking, and not all thoughts are good. That's why we have to learn to take thoughts captive. Now, six influencers of the mind. There's six influencers. There's the flesh, just our car, old carnal nature. And believe me, it's, it, it tries to manifest itself. The devil, which is in the unseen world that's influencing, it influenced Ananias and Sapphira, caused them to lie to the Holy Spirit. And the world system, all the influences that are coming into our five senses, everything coming at us. I, and if you've been under a little bit of disturbing thoughts lately, uh, that probably is because of all the pressures that are coming at us. And we're trying to process through our physiology and our heart all this data. And it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming people. It's just literally overwhelming them. Just the data coming in. And then there's the, the that's on the, on the, on the, on the uh, demonic side. But on the pure side, God's side, there's the Holy Spirit that's influencing our thoughts. We want the Holy Spirit in control, influencing our thoughts. We want the Word of God, the powerful two-edged sword, the Word of God to influence our thoughts, our thinking. And we want the community of God's people. We wage warfare with wise counsel. We need, we need others. That's just the bottom line. If you've become isolated, reach out to somebody. Ask for help. Do it today. I, I text so many people in the morning, good morning, and people are reaching into my life. I'm reaching into theirs. By the time an hour's gone by from, from 4 to 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, there's been about 10 to 20 connections already made. I couldn't make it without those connections. People speaking in, sending a scripture, encouraging. It, it's awesome. Proverbs 23, 7 says, As he thinketh in his heart, here we go. Now we're thinking inside our heart. It says, so is he. That word thinketh means portal or gate. It's an entryway. We must be mindful. That's what I want to say. We must be mindful, meaning we must think about what we let into our mind, into our heart, what we let in. And we must become excellent gatekeepers, port keepers. We must become excellent at discerning what's either coming from a past memory within us and trying to insert itself into our heart or something coming from the external, whether it's internal or external, coming from the flesh, a bad memory, even a nightmare. What we're allowing to come into our heart because the heart is a critical place that's under warfare. It, it's what it will, whoever, who, Whatever controls the heart controls the life. So we want to be very mindful to be good gatekeepers, to watch what comes in to that place in us that's going to influence us and going to bring us or, 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 or pressure us or lead us as the Holy Spirit will. But in the carnal nature, it's oppressive and it pressures us. We're in this battle every day and the mind is so critical. The heart, the heart, the battle is over the heart, the territory of your mind, your will, and your emotions. And tonight I want to pray for you. If you've been under attack in your emotions and you're disturbed and you're troubled, whether you're listening to this right now or you listen to this tomorrow or five days from now, or you listen to this 20 days from now. I want to believe through the prayer we're going to pray tonight that God is going to break through in your life. 
He's going to break through and bring forth something brand new tonight by the power of his Holy Spirit. That's the faith we can have as we intercede and pray and believe for each other. That God is going to break through. The battles over our heart, our mind, will, our choices and emotions, all of the areas, mind, will, and emotions within us, think, feel, and decide. It's just a, how many realize, that's, a, that's an amazing place there in the heart. A lot can happen. I look at people, I think, what's going on in their, what's really going on in their heart? The, because the battle is over the heart. In, in, in Proverbs 4.23, it says, guard your heart above all else. For it determines the course of your life. As your heart goes, so will you. That's just how it is. That's why God said, keep and guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it flows the issues of life. Whoever captures our heart will capture our life. So we want in the morning to make that simple for the Lord. To surrender our will over to his will and let the Holy Spirit take control. That is the most powerful place and position we could ever have in our life is a position of surrender. Now in Matthew, oh, in Matthew 12, 35, it says, a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. It's really the condition of the heart that produces what, a, what, what is produced out of our life. And you know, we can be, I don't wanna use the term schizophrenic, but during the day we can, we can be funny because we can have a godly moment and then we can have a carnal moment. Have you noticed that? that that's not truly schizophrenic. That's just the warfare that's going on inside of us because we might not be acting by stopping and being still practicing sword we might just be reacting in the old carnal nature it's growing in this this is god wants to develop us in discernment in ability to know what's happening deep inside of us and go uh -huh, get it got it not going there <laughs> stopping that thing i'm going to god excuse me that's not the way i'm going i'm not going to say that oh we haven't even got the mouth yet but because it comes out of the heart. It comes out of that place. Now, Matthew 13, you can read it. 3 to 9 and 18 to 23, parable of the sower. The parable of the sower, where it's talking about hard ground, stony ground, thorny ground, and the good ground. And the seed of the word of God that goes onto those different grounds. The, the, the reality is that that is speaking about our heart. We want our heart to be soft and pliable. We want our heart to be open to what God has. We want it to be fertile soil for him to plant his word in. And so God might want to be doing some work in our heart. David said, search me, O Lord, know my heart. See if there be any evil tendency in me. He was fully aware, obviously, that there could be problems with his heart. He had many situations like that. Now, our mouth, what we say, this is the third battle zone. Mind, first battle zone, heart, third battle, put, put four fingers up, third battle zone, mouth. Now, uh, in Matthew 12, 34, it says, it says, you brood of snakes. How could evil men like you speak what is good and right? Because he, he perceived their heart and he was speaking to them. He said, for whatever is in your heart determines what you say. Proverbs 10, 11 says, the words of the godly are life-giving fountain. The words of the godly are a life-giving fountain. That's coming out of the heart that's in the flow of the Holy Spirit under the control. And it's like a fountain, it says. The words of the wicked conceal violent intentions. Boy, this is powerful language, the Word of God. It makes it clear. Ephesians 4, 29. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. It's so critical what comes out of our mouth and what comes out of our mouth is, let's just say it, it is what's in our heart. Don't say I, did, I didn't mean that. Well, if you said it, 
It came out. You meant it. It's in there. That's the time to look back and go, Lord, what is in there that needs to be dealt with? And believe me, in the morning, if you say that to the Lord, if you review your previous day and you realize, ooh, man, that, that wasn't the right thing to say. Holy Spirit, what's going on in my heart? Believe me, at that point, you'll be enlightened. The Holy Spirit is faithful to reveal what's causing those words. That's why walking in the Spirit is so critical. Even the Bible tells us we'll be accountable for every word. James 3, 2 through 11. Now this is where it talks about the tongue. and it's. I wish I had time just to, just to read through this. It's so powerful, the use of the tongue. But think of it. The same energy that, it would, that we could say, I love you, and have a deep impact on somebody's life. You could say, I hate you, and have another kind of impact. It's the, it's, the, it's the tongue. It says in the last verse, does a spring of water bubble up out with both fresh water and bitter water? We want to let God examine our heart. We want to have a mouth that, that is pure before the Lord and what we do. Now, think of this. If you're a thief, it says in, in Ephesians 4, 28. Now, here's the contract. If you're a thief, that means you're using your hands to take stuff. Quit stealing, it says. Okay, so stop doing what's wrong. That's The Bible is so practical and clear. If you're stealing, don't do that anymore. Don't use your hands for evil. But here's where it gets down deeper. Instead, use your hands for good work. And then give generous, generously to others in need. That's so powerful. Because that shows the full cycle, that in order to give generously, there has to be a transformation of the heart. So it says, quit, if you're stealing, quit stealing. If you're doing something you shouldn't be, stop doing it. And let that transformation happen in the morning as we activate a flow of the Spirit. And let it flow out all day. And what we're used to reacting to and using our mouth and our hand, maybe for something we should, I don't know. We can begin to discern through these battle zones of mind, heart, mouth, and hand what's really going on inside of us. Who is in control? Is God in control through the spirit or am I in control through the carnal man? It's so critical. Whatever we say or do is an indication of what's in our heart. What's in our heart is what we allow into through our mind. So we're going to become amazing gatekeepers in the days ahead. And, and this is what is so powerful about your morning time with God. This is where you can open up your heart to God and let him do something amazing each morning to cleanse and clear. I recommend, if you haven't read the surrender prayer, Go straight up to the website, first15am.org. Download the surrender prayer. Read it just for the next 40 days straight, and your life will never be the same. It will do a work inside your heart. So I just encourage, I wrote it on my back, and everything the Lord convicted me and touched me with, I just wrote it into the surrender prayer. So it, I wrote it, but you can use it. And if you want... And to write one, you write one. But I'll tell you, people that have read that, one pastor's read that surrender prayer for 1,300 and some days. It's been transforming to his life. He would tell you that if he was here. It's just because it's practical. It leads us right through the scriptures and allows us to pray and be healed. Like David said, search me, O Lord, know my heart. See if there be any evil tendency in me. God wants to do something in our heart. If you never let it into your mind, if you never go there, you'll never end up going there. So we have to be gatekeepers. We have to keep things not out of our mind and we have to let certain things in. I believe God wants to unleash his power tonight. I want to pray for you. I have five minutes, six minutes, and I want to pray a blessing on your life. In, first, in 2 Timothy 1.7, it says, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Dunamis, agape, and a mind disciplined and under control. That's what God wants to give us. And I had a scripture here. 
that I, I believe God's going to unleash his power tonight. He's going to release something fresh in it. I'm encouraging you to spend every morning with the Lord, the first 15, surrendering your will to his will and receiving his love. But I want to pray for you tonight. I believe God wants to unleash his power in you, in you to transform you and through you to help transform and bless others. A double portion blessing on your life. Enough for you and enough for those that you touch with your life. I believe this is going to happen. John 10, 27, let me pray. My sheep, listen to my voice. I want to pray for ears to hear what God is speaking to you. Fresh ears to hear. Not the ears that are here, these physical ears, but the ears of your heart. And I want to pray, and he says, I know them. This is Jesus speaking. I know them. I want to pray for your relationship with the Lord to grow in, your, in this season, intimacy, and they follow me. I want to pray for a fresh grace for you to follow the Lord. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for these eight weeks and for this class and for the blessing of being together with each person that's come in. Lord, we've linked shields. We're walking together. We're standing together. We're stronger together. And Lord, I pray John 10, 27 over each person. It says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I pray for ears to hear. I pray for the grace of God for each one as we spend time with you each morning that we'd have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is speaking to our heart, convicting, changing, imparting, showing us visions, dreams, things for our life. Lord, that we would have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. I pray that everyone will have a journal ready They'll be able to write down what you're saying, the God thoughts, Lord. I pray that they'll, excuse me, be quickened by the Holy Spirit to what is for them for that day, manna for the day, and grace for the moment. Father, I pray for fresh manna as they meet with you every single day. Lord, and I just pray for ears to hear. Lord, I pray too, Lord, that each one will come into a deeper intimacy with you, Lord, in this season, a close walk with you. Father, as the uh, relationships are a function of time spent, Father, as we get up early in the morning, as we spend time with you, sitting, worshiping, reading your word, opening up our heart to you, surrendering, I pray, Lord, that a deep intimacy and an abiding grace will be upon each person. God, those here right now that are listening and those that are come in later, the power of your Holy Spirit will unleash your anointing in their life to release a fresh blessing, fresh strength, power, love, and a sound mind, faith, hope, and love. And we bind any discouragement or despairing, anything coming against them. We break that assignment in Jesus' name. Father, we believe for a fresh oil, a fresh horn of oil, a fresh release of your power tonight. A fresh grace would come upon each person tonight by your Holy Spirit as they spend time with you in intimacy. Lord, you'll fill their cup. It'll overflow. There'll be enough for them and enough for others. God, the, that you'll activate the love center in them every morning and it will bind anxiety. It will bind fear. It will bind that work of fear in their life and it will destroy that enemy. Anxiety, fear, panic attacks. Father, you can solve and defeat every one of those problems. I pray for that grace today to come in to that deeper loving relationship with you through time spent. Father, we break the assignment of discouragement. We break the assignment of despair. We break the assignment to come against people's minds and hearts in, in evil ways. We break that assignment today in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray right now that each one will follow you in a fresh way. They'll hear your voice and they'll follow you. Lord, I pray the leading of the Holy Spirit will be so clear. Assignments for every single day. Details, Lord, that you want them to do. Not just random events, not just seeking their own, but seeking you and the will and the purpose of God. And you'll begin to speak. Unleash right now, we ask, the fruits of the Spirit. Unleash right now the gifts of the Spirit. Father, I thank you for each person as they walk. Lord, they'll not be alone. You'll be with them. They'll walk and they'll not be alone. Others will gather with them. They'll be influencers in this day. 
And the things coming against them will not defeat them, but they will see you move on their behalf in the midst of that circumstance to bring about your purpose and plan. Give them courage, give them boldness, give them, give them, give them strength. God, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit be unleashed tonight. Be unleashed, Lord, within them. And God, bring forth in them a river of living water and release, Lord, your power to accomplish your will. I pray for any illnesses, sicknesses, diseases, God. I pray that your divine power and anointing will touch their physical body right now. Father, we lay hands on our mind, any disturbance within the mind, even physiology. We, we pray, Lord, for your health and wholeness in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that our body, soul, and spirit would be whole and flowing and in rhythm with your kingdom. Lord, I thank you for each person. Father, we link shields. We're stronger together. I bless each one. I thank you for them, and I thank you for tonight. I thank you for these eight classes. I thank you for the nine classes prior to that. We finished a course tonight. Lord, if anyone wants to listen to this, they can go up and retrieve those and listen. And we thank you that they're captured somewhere where we can re-listen, re-hear. Lord, I thank you for each person. Bless them tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I just want to let you know that we're finishing uh, this class, but we will be starting up a fresh uh, Experiencing God's Love in the fall, middle of September sometime, and we'll start a fresh 40-day worship challenge. So uh, uh, until then, I just pray blessing on your life, strength on your life, and the goodness of God to fill your life. Bless you. This has been a wonderful time together. See you. Bye.